The K by Theodore Taylor, Chapter 6 In the early morning, I knew it was early because the air was still cool and there was dampness on the boards of the raft. I heard Timothy ch shout, I see an island true! In wild excitement, I stumbled up and fell overboard. I went under the water, yelling for him, then came up, gasping. I heard a splash and knew he was in the water too. Something slapped up against my leg and I thought it was Timothy. I know how to swim, but I didn't know which way to go. So I was treading water. Then I heard Timothy's frightened roar, Sharks! And he was thrashing about near me. He grabbed my hair with one hand and used his other arm to drag me back towards the raft. I had turned on my face and was trying to hold my breath. Then I felt my body being thrown and I was back on the boards of the raft, gasping for air. I knew that Timothy was still in the water because I could hear splashing and cursing. The raft tilted down suddenly on one side. Timothy was back aboard. Panting, he bent over me. He yelled, Damn fool, man. I told you about the shark. I knew Timothy was in a rage. I could hear his heavy breathing and knew he was staring at me. Shark all around us, all the time, he roared. I said, I'm sorry. Timothy said, on dis raft you crawl, young boss. You hear me? I nodded. His voice was thick with anger. But in a moment, after he took several deep breaths, he asked, You all right, young boss? I finally, s I guess he sat down beside me to rest. His breathing was still heavy. Finally, he said, Man die quick out here. We both forgotten about the island. I said, Timothy, you saw an island? He laughed. Yes, the island, there it is. I said, where? Timothy answered scornfully. There, look, man, look. Angrily, I, told, I said to him, I can't see. He kept forgetting that. His voice was low and he said, yes, young boss, that be true. In all this harassment with the shark, I did forget. Then I felt his hands on my shoulders. He twisted them. That direction, young boss. Straining to look where he had pointed, I asked, Are there any people on it? Tis a very small island. Outrageous low. I repeated, Are there any people on it? I thought they could contact my father and then send for help. Timothy answered honestly, No young boss. No people. People not be living on the island that has no water. No people, no water, no food, no phones. It was not any better than the raft. In fact, it might be worse. How far away are we? About two mile, Timothy said. Maybe we should stay on the raft. A schooner will see us, or an airplane. Timothy said positively, No, we better off on land. And we drift in that way. The tide be running with us. His voice was happy. He wanted to be off the sea. I was certain my father had planes and ships out looking for us. I said, Timothy, the Navy is searching for us, I know. Timothy did not answer me. He just said, "'Tis a pretty ting, to be sure. I see a white beach, and behind that, low sea grape bushes, then on the hill some palm, maybe twenty, thirty palm. I was sure he couldn't see, even see that far. I said, Timothy, wouldn't it be better if we stayed on the raft and found a big island with people on it? He ignored me. He said, Bidden to night, I saw surf washing white over the banks of, off the port, but did not awaken you, young boss, but now we be getting near decays. I said, I don't want to go to that island. I didn't think there was anyone on earth as stubborn as old Timothy. There was steel in his voice when he answered, We be going on that island, young boss. Dat be true. But I knew... How I felt, but he knew how I felt now because he added, From this island, we will get help. Be true, I swear.